Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we're on the website of Gardner Hallgate Auctioneers and we're going to have a look at one of their latest auctions. This is the Musical Instrument Auction. If you've been watching the channel you would have seen recently I've posted three other videos from Gardner Hallgate. These are all guitar related but uh, this one is the general musical instrument one. Just before we get into it I'd just like to say if you enjoy these videos please consider subscribing, like or comment because it really does help the channel out. So yeah we have the musical instrument auction this is happening on the finishing on the 10th of March it's the same day as one of the auctions which has pro audio and guitars in the guitar bit is in the morning and then this auction starts at 12. There's 310 lots so a fair amount but it could be a lot worse so it's not too bad. Gardner Hallgate notoriously kind of put in ridiculous amounts of stuff into the auction but that's at least a fairly reasonable number buyers premium is 26.4 percent with the gardener hall gate so that's what you pay uh, on top of the uh, hammer price i think it's probably somewhere here yet yeah, 26.4 uh, this is a uk based auction so if you're outside of the uk if you're in europe or somewhere else in the world then bear in mind bear in mind shipping fees import export fees and maybe CITES restrictions on things like ivory and tortoise shell so just be aware of that so yeah without further ado um let's just crack on and see what we've got we're going to speed through we're not going to go too crazy um and yeah let's see if there's anything interesting got a whole load of uh, banjo some keech banjolelis there 100 to 200 more keech banjolelis windsor pine mandolin banjo and uh, another banjo there another one with the British made lion logo. I don't actually like the way that uh Gardner Hallgate do this where you can't see the main description in the in the main thing. It doesn't really make sense for people that are kind of casually going through an auction catalogue and maybe looking for names. It just doesn't really make sense anyway. Uh a Savannah tenor tenor banjo and another banjo, two fretless five string banjos, George Matthews five string banjo. There's another banjo here. Uh, and unnamed four string banjo and also that the first one is in bold and the other one isn't it just doesn't really make sense to me personally but uh, that's my opinion contemporary banjo there jim deacon farmer contemporary banjo it's a lot of uh banjos here ludwig five string banjo there jerry webb black heart five string banjo countryman pro ukulele banjo jerry webb black heart five string banjo a couple more banjos here we'll just kind of go over these see if there's anything super interesting maybe this paramount by william l lang style c tenor banjo six to eight hundred i am not particularly knowledgeable or i have almost no knowledge about uh, banjos to be honest uh, vega phone banjo there gretsch one a few others a gibson let's have a look at the gibson banjo 1000 to 1500 master tone banjo sold with a spare Gibson TB3 metal ring. Okay, and an ode five string banjo there 1000 to 1500. It's quite a lot of uh, banjos here. Epiphone Bandmaster recording must have been someone's collection. This one is uh, quite fancy, isn't it? Two and a half to two eight fine bacon and day silver bell montana four string banjo okay i'm sure for people that are really into banjos this is like a ridiculously high level banjo i can see that it is quite impressive looking let's have a look at this another fine banjo while we're here it'd be rude not to look at uh, high quality instruments fine stunning staghorn five string banjo Okay, and here's an ultra ultra fine uh, Gibson banjo, Gibson Florentine five string banjo master tone. Interesting. Banjo has been restored by Adrian Farmer, and a new neck has been made. Original neck and original parts have been retained and are sold with the banjo. Okay, interesting. Well, look at that. Yeah, it's pretty pretty epic as uh, banjos go it'd be great if anyone's really into banjos if they could comment on on these it'd be great to know more a couple of other zither banjos more zither banjos fine and rare martin ukulele there 1200 to 
1400 always popular George Formby Dallas E Banjo Lady Windsor model Banjo Lynn another fancy um, Banjo here 4 to 6000 fine and unique bacon and day Montana silver bell NE plus ultra number 6 Banjo wow that's got uh, it's got a lot of names to it definitely looks uh, pretty fancy so it's interesting so great auction if you like banjos contemporary five string banjo I think we saw this in one of the last auctions but it might have been with some other lot so maybe it just didn't sell it's a uh, Vena which is a really cool instrument needs like a lot of uh, repair but I think that was from the previous auction Contemporary Loot by and labelled Michael John Barker 100 to 200 whole load of uh, instruments violins, auto harp some kind of tom drum countryman soprano banjolini, load of ukuleles here just some general guitars and bits, Lacknell and Co concertina, we know that those are worth a bit gear for music banjo Lacknell and Co, Wheatstone concertinas here. These are pretty high end ones. Another Wheatstone. A couple more Wheatstones here. Let's have a look at uh, this one. That's a super high end one. Two and a half to three and a half thousand. Wheatstone and Co, Aeola English System Concertina. 64 metal buttons on foliate pierced wooden ends looks to be original period case and there you go well two and a half to three and a half thousand so that's pretty serious right a couple of interesting instruments here a 19th century english harp guitar stevenson and turnstile or eight new turnstile london above the fretboard 300 to 500 and an early 19th century English harp lute inscribed light so it's quite a you do see these in museum Edward light I believe is the maker but there are similar instruments as we can see from this one from other workshops so maybe they made all of them and uh, pass them on to other people or not but uh, yeah you see these in a lot of museums on the surface of it they look fairly interesting and decent but uh, in truth I don't think these are the uh, highest quality of instruments of by any stretch of the imagination but anyway uh, late Victorian Edwardian uh, portable harmonium there interesting early 19th century French mahogany square piano 600 to a thousand there another square piano there Clementi and Co of London two and a half to three and a half thousand at least that one's got a fairly decent estimate there square piano by John Melly Dublin circa 1800 700 to a thousand on that really is quite a lot of stuff in this auction now that's kind of curious round fronted English square piano by Detmer and Son. I've not seen one like this before, 500 to 1000. There's a lot more additional information here that's worth looking at, but uh, I'd say look at it at your own time because uh, we've got too many instruments to look at. Good Velmar Walnut Grand Piano there, Italian Eco Ranger 12 string, and some other banjo, 6 string banjo contemporary sitar and some kind of other strange electric laps are that interesting old bandura and uh, some kind of electric mandolin there sing gibson electric mandolin interesting some more banjos there a few more banjos a carla acacia tenor electric acoustic ukulele Premier Signia drum kit there, more drum kits, Remo Gretsch, Pearl, uh, snare drum there, another Pearl snare drum, 
Diamond Snare Drum there, Pearl Signature Series, Omar Hakim model. Good quality snare drum. Two unbranded snare drums, possibly homemade. Okay, quite interesting colour. Quite like them. Yeah, you can see from the wood. It's interesting. They look quite nice. Pearl Sensei Tone snare drum. Pearl Mahogany snare drum. A few more bits and pieces. Some Zildjian symbols there. More symbols here. Won't get into that too much because I don't know much about it. A selection of Leblon semi rigid drum cases there. Protection racket. I think these are always popular with drummers. These protection racket ones. These look like older model ones. I think the newer logo design is a bit different. Um, Walton's uh, real uh, Irish Balron drum. I think Walton's is a big music shop in uh, Dublin, so maybe it's something to do with them. An accordion keyboard. Oh, this is interesting. A rare national uh, triolian resonator mandolin. Okay, I don't know if I've ever seen a national resonator mandolin before. Obviously, the, uh, the guitars quite uh, quite often, but that's interesting. And only six hundred to eight hundred. That's quite uh, low considering what some of the guitars go for. So that is quite interesting. Interesting auction. Some more, some Ludwig drums there. A couple of flutes here. Some metal flutes. More flutes here. Boozy and Hawk. Um, these are, I'm sure, interesting to some people, but it's a bit out of my knowledge zone. A load of clarinets here. If anyone spots anything which is good, maybe we should have a look at this because this looks a bit better. A pair of noble blackwood clarinets, A and B flat there. Uh, there was a good pair of buffet crump on before that. Actually quite a good collection of uh, instruments here. Let's have a look at uh, these ones here. Good pair of Boozy and Hawk Symphony 1010 blackwood clarinets. Okay. Moving on a bit. Selma. Clarinets. Uh, oh, this is interesting. A good English box with an ivory double flageolet, Bayern stamped Bainbridge. Don't often see those. It's an interesting looking one. A bark gold lacquered trumpet there. Set of old Northumbrian pipes, unnamed. Always interesting to see something a bit different. A few more flutes there. Another clarinet. Um, here is a good ornery Selma saxophone, two to three. These are always quite uh, popular. Just saying, this saxophone is a tenor, not an alto. Okay, very good. Just to clarify that position. Holton professional um, horn, French horn here. This instrument is in aesthetically poor condition with scratches, small hole near the bell, but still plays reasonably well. Okay, interesting. I wonder if they do actually try them. It's a Besson tuba, uh, French horn, an old bugle. Okay, interesting. Uh, another Henri Selma. Series 80, a super action. This is a tenor saxophone. Saxophone is sold with the original instrument passport card dated 11 second 99 from Bath Music Centre Limited. Interesting. Right, now we're on to some things that I probably know a little bit uh, more about. So we've got a couple of looks to be kind of tradey violins here. Late 19th century violin labelled Ruggieri. Let's have a look at few of the pictures actually looks kind of fairly interesting a bit of a crack going there from the button but could be worse 120 to 116 it's not too bad what they're saying here early 20th century violin labeled imperial once again not too bad for a kind of trade violin another kind of tradey looking thing here but I think 
70 to 100 it's fairly reasonable another 19th century violin here just more kind of trade stuff a whole load of other things sometimes it's good to look at these kind of groups of instruments you never know what uh, we might see I think that's all pretty tradey so we can skip through there some miscellaneous stuff we can ignore that same with that just bits and pieces some hill cases other kind of bits and bobs this is looks like all useful stuff chin rests and clamps always handy another set of interesting uh, violins in interesting condition a couple more 20th century type violins this one with the more guarnieri esque kind of f holes perhaps or kind of almost magini like maybe another set of a uh, few instruments we don't need to talk about that too much some more kind of probably trade violins here you can really tell usually from the back but no pictures there some more kind of generic type instruments I should say G JTL violin we don't need to get into that standard kind of French violin a couple of standard German violins there another standard violin though let's actually just have a look into that because the F holes are slightly different yeah hard to say with some of these ones another JTL there interesting matchstick uh, violin there okay and a child's violin that's pretty bizarre good late 19th century violin French violin in need of restoration but not good enough to have more than one picture 19th century English violin apparently interesting uh, F holes there unpurfled might be good for some kind of classical setup or something German three quarter violin there contemporary viola unlabeled looks in fairly good condition there more bits and pieces there Breton another French trade violin German violin with a clots label it's probably standard kind of trade thing the German violin it's all I think this first part of the auction for violins is usually pretty tradey there Eastern European violin looks fairly heavy on there varnish there 19th century German violin quite like the F holes there looks curious enough I think another case here some other bits and bobs more cases some more clamps more bits and bobs all interesting stuff but maybe not so much interesting to us lots of bits and bobs that's good that will speed up the uh, video a bit okay various interesting filing backs and fronts lots like this are always curious you're kind of left wondering what is actually here really difficult to tell 100 to 150 but someone who knows more than me will probably have a good idea Charles Medefino French violin there we can go past that Strad magazines no uh, Sotheby's musical instrument catalogs probably interesting but who really wants to have a load of that stuff in their house probably not early Strad magazines bound same thing do you really want that in your house a few books and things a few other books all pretty standard fare this is a book that I would really like to own, uh, Golden Age of Violin Making Spain. Seems to be in every gardener auction and every Amati auction, so I assume that someone has a garage full of 20,000 of these and is uh, just wanting to get rid of them slowly. Uh, Carlo Bugonzi book, Strad Legacy, we won't get into this book stuff so much, but I'm sure they're all wonderful. And we'll just keep going. Hill Bow Maker, it's an interesting book. Some good uh, potential books here, but I think we can 
go past. Oh, unique electric steel bow bending iron. Okay, designed to accommodate five bows at a time. Okay, interesting. That's, that's a curious one. Some uh, bow boxes there. More bow boxes. Some bows here. Some more collection of cello bows. Mounted violin bows. Whole bunch of bows. We won't get into that too much. Violin bow stamped pencil there. Some nickel mounted bows there. More bows. Just a whole load of bows, some of which might be interesting. It's definitely worth taking your time and having a look in more detail, but we don't want to take too long over these, but it's an interesting auction. A couple of interesting uh, base bows there. Some German bows. Not sure that uh, Dragonetti pattern is necessarily correct because I mean the German bows are like a modification of the Dragonetti style but they are you know their own bows in their own right it's different to a Dragonetti base bow and different to a French base bow in my opinion but maybe the frog is slightly different to some of the German ones here's a contemporary double base bow this is the French style of uh, base bow which very much looks you know like a cello bow or something, 80 to 140, looks interesting. Some sticks there, some more sticks. Uh, English silver mounted violin bow, 5 to 800, interesting. Contemporary Brock Vile bow, oh I'm glad that they've called it a uh, a vial bow and not a uh, Brock violin bow because these are pretty kind of heavy and uh, not very good for uh, violin. Find an interesting French silver mounted violin bow stamped Vora. Okay, let's see what else we got. German nickel mounted violin bow stamped Gustave Praja, three to four hundred. Another Knopf school bow there, three to four hundred. French silver mounted violin bow stamped Louis Bazin. German silver mounted violin bow faintly stamped. I think we've got quite a lot of bows here. A Bausch bow there. Silver mounted violin bow stamped Florus, three to four hundred. Nickel mounted violin, violin cello bow, sorry, cello bow stamped Emile Richard. Nickel mounted vinyl bow stamped L. Morizon. French nickel mounted vinyl bow stamped C. Wuthold, 3 to 400. Some more Bausch bows, you can go past that. Otto Derschmidt, the same. Winkler. Wunderlicht. Or Winkler, we can skip past this, I think. Dorfler bow there. Same with that. And French silver mounted vinyl bow stamped Cuneo Huri, 60 to 100. Interesting. End of the stick has been spliced, hence the low estimate there. Silver mounted vinyl bow stamped CH Husson, Paris, 3 to 500. Bow stamped taut there. Silver mounted cello bow indistinctly stamped 250 to 450. Another silver mounted viola bow stamped Albert Nuremberger. A uh, silver mounted violin bow stamped Sartoria, Paris. Two to three thousand on that. Any information on it? It's got the ivory reference. This is a good quality French bow, but we do not believe it is by Eugene Sartori. There are some scratches on the head and some missing wood immediately above the head. There is plain wear on the handle and a repair to the top of the frog below the handle. On the player's side, where to the frog mortise will see image for guidance, personal viewing always advised. Well, that's very uh, honest uh, of them. Interesting Baroque violin bow, indistinctly stamped. That's interesting, like Kramer style head there of that bow, 250 to 450. Interesting looking bow, a pretty odd uh, frog. Baroque violin bow, unstamped. It's quite a nice looking bow, two to three hundred. That'll sell well, I think. 
that's quite nice nice looking bow interesting old cello bow yeah that's an interesting bow there 250 to 350 I think that that will be popular JTL uh, French bow there 250 to 350 another nickel mounted French bow there Morison another bow stamped fatigue 1000 to 1500 cello bow that is silver mounted vinyl bow stamped HLG 2 to 2.5 let's see what they say about this not a lot silver mounted cello bow stamped Dodd ok let's see what else there is oh we're on to uh, violins now so that's good past the uh, bow section I think so a Dutch violin probably by Alphonse van Hoof ok interesting two to three thousand so they're going all out for that a lot of the Gardner Hallgate stuff does get uh, a bit pricey J Heidi this a uh, Chinese made uh, viola there interesting violin labeled Stefano Caponetto Catania via Petraria Okay, five to seven hundred there. It's quite a curious looking uh, instrument there. Don't like the button so much, but interesting. Nevertheless, vinyl labelled Bernardo Calcani, Cremona, 1875, five to eight hundred. They do get some uh, interesting stuff sometimes in this auction. 19th century violin labelled Luigi Carlos. Two to three hundred. That's a fairly nice looking violin there. Interesting nineteenth century violin unlabeled. It does look slightly familiar. Violin is sold as silver mount of violin bow stamp those grey London. Another violin bow stick stamped phrase Meyer, Meyer with silver adjuster and then nine to a thousand nine hundred to twelve hundred sorry contemporary viola there Carl Bitterer French violin by and stamped Mouchant five to seven hundred another kind of possibly French violin of some kind or possibly equally not. 1300 to 1600 German violin they're saying 3 to 400 that's uh, seen a bit of uh, wear I think it's annoying that they're now doing the imperial uh, back length so I can't maybe they did it oh I suppose they have both 55.9 so I won't complain about that French violin there, Lebert Humbert. Mid 19th century German violin, unlabeled. That's an interesting back, isn't it? Wow, how many like pins are in that uh, button? Yeah, that is a really, really curious uh, back to that violin there. Three to four hundred. 19th century German violin, possibly Lowendahl. English viola made for Arthur Selby apparently by Lawrence Cocker we do see that name come up every now and then 19th century violin labelled Jacobus Steiner interesting 20th century French violin let's just speed through it German violin there eccentric late violin labelled Vincenzo Cavani oh there this thing is so bizarre the way that this scroll is you think it's been warped or something that's yeah, really really quite bizarre three to five hundred exotic figured back unusual outline an oval shaped scroll yeah it's pretty bizarre French 7 8th uh, violin there Magini copy pretty standard 
Hawks and Sons tie release violin. You can see this if you look at the older uh, Hawks and Sons catalogs. I saw one the other day. It's quite interesting. Interesting 18th, 19th century violin there. 1000 to 1500. Labelled John Hart. Interesting. Looks quite curious. School of Gofrilla Violin. Interesting. Good English Violin by and labelled Walter H. Mason, Manchester. 700 to 1000. Interesting 19th century English Violin labelled J. Brown. Is this the people that are from, oh god, I can't quite remember now. Um, Grimsby, that's it. 2 to 400. You do see these every now and then. Violin labelled Judas A. Hubica, 5 to 700. Possible French violin there. Another possible French violin. Everything seems to be flooded with French violin. That one actually looks fairly decent, 1200 to 1600. Violin labelled Amati and Geno. Interesting. 1000 to 1400 on that one. Another violin with a French label, 1500 to 2000. Good Scottish violin, circa 1870. Unlabeled, okay. Three to 5000, that seems like uh, quite an ambitious uh, estimate for a, a Scottish violin. Mid 19th century violin, labeled Gio Giorgio, 4 to 600. Teningrad. Okay. Good English violin by and label made by Thomas Smith. Three to five on that. Interesting. Good contemporary double purfled viola. Labelled Michael Anthony. Okay. Let's see what else we got. So another French violin. German violin there, we can go past that. 18th century violin labelled Cahusac. Interesting. 1500 to 2,500 there. Violin is sold with a photocopy of the internal inscription mentioned, also images online. Okay. English violin of the Ferber School, circa 1800, 4 to 600. Bohemian violin by and labelled Joseph Tomasek. Okay, interesting. Good English viola by and labelled J.W. Owen. I don't know where they're getting these prices from three and a half to four and a half thousand. This just seems like a bit a bit crazy, really. I just can't see it selling for that. Another English violin, George Pine. Acre London, two and a half to three and a half. Eighteenth century German violin, five hundred to eight hundred. There. English violin by Richard Duke in need of extensive restoration. There, two to four hundred. English violin by John Betts in need of extensive restoration, two to four hundred. Original back front and scroll, new ribs has already been added to the instrument. Okay, so it's already missing a fair bit of stuff, but that will probably sell quite well if it is a, a John Betts. 19th century violin in need of restoration, 800 to 1200. I just feel that a lot of these estimates are just way too high. Another violin in need of restoration looks like someone started great uh, amazing back on that though look at that beautiful kind of uh, bird's eye maple on that possibly by Franciscus Geifenhoff of Vienna yeah I don't know I just think crazy I think some of these prices are just a bit ridiculous good French violin yeah it's a nice looking French violin quite like that 600 to 800 19th century Strad copy. Look at the crackle there of the varnish. 
four to six hundred. Violin labelled EM Reams. Violin Italian violin by and labelled Antonio Licci of Cremona. One thousand to fifteen hundred. Okay, well they seem pretty confident of uh, of that one. Scottish violin by and labelled made by John Lowe. That's got a nice kind of crackle to the varnish. Varnish a bit dodgy on the underside. 400 to 600. Vinyl labelled William H. Luff. 1000 to 1500. We're obviously missing lots of the details here, but uh, you can have a look at it in your own kind of time. Another violin with a Colin Mazar label. Obviously looks kind of nice enough another 19th century violin with a rocker label okay good English violin by and label John Ray 800 to 1200 yeah it looks okay looks quite nice let's read a bit more about this one general wear and tear consistent with age some over varnishing okay that's not too bad let's go and sing some more cases here and things nothing too crazy stag electric stick bass oh a whole load of uh, cello necks and scrolls 300 to 500 this will probably be uh, quite popular actually I suspect two interesting 19th century uh, cello matching fronts and backs three to five hundred that will be possibly popular as well early 20th century french cello two to four hundred english cello labeled t greater 1916 three to five hundred that definitely has potential contemporary cello there 19th century cello unlabeled English cello by and labelled France George Rost. Interesting F hole uh, shape and placement on this one. 1500 to two and a half. Mirkor cello there. 18th century cello unlabeled. Two and a half to three and a half. That's kind of fairly interesting. Let's see what else there is about this. Has had many old repairs. Okay, viewing advised. A cello by Jeffrey J. Gilbert that looks like it's either not been finished or has been stripped of the varnish. What did they say here? The varnish on the table is instrument has been stripped and a sound post cracked repaired. Well that's unfortunate. Instrument is sold with numerous historical receipts from Edward Withers Limited and JP Givier and Co. Okay several black and white photographs of the instrument before the varnish was taken off the table really you don't understand why someone did that took the varnish off it's pretty stupid really 19th century cello early 19th early 20th century cello there okay good italian cello labeled officina claudio monteverdi three to three and a half there really doesn't look like the greatest of instruments let's be honest contemporary rehin quarter size double bass 40 to 80 interesting italian swellback double bass by joseph giuseppe marconcini ferrara 1805 with steep sloping shoulders okay this looks kind of curious um there's some whole load of documents here let's not get into it too much this double bass has an interesting history, having previously belonged to uh, Zlodislav Fajinski, completely bugger that one up, who was a regular double bass player in two bands on Cunard's RMS 
Franconia in 1965. In 1968, the owner had the base stolen from his cabin by a dock worker and it was later recovered in a junk shop, having had the varnish stripped and the label, neck and scroll gone missing. A full account of the story can be viewed along with images of the instrument in the online catalogue images. The instrument, which was purchased later by Hamilton Caswell, is also sold with a carefully chosen plain maple block for making a new neck scroll in keeping with the flame free Italian poplar of the back and ribs. Also commenting in the slot is a letter from uh, Fersniski uh, to Caswell dated 1967 recording the wording of the Marconcini label. Okay, interesting. Uh, and an article written by Sergio Scaramelli with excellent photographs of another Giuseppe uh, Marconcini double bass which clearly provides a reference of the maker's characteristics. Okay, that's a pretty bizarre situation, quite unfortunate. French double bass of the Derazi school, 1500 to 3000. And I think that's it. We're back to uh, the beginning again. So that was the uh, auction. Quite a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, some interesting stuff, interesting um, kind of banjos and uh, stringed instruments. Um, yeah, some of the estimates seem a little bit crazy to me, but who knows? Uh, that might be reasonable. I'll put a link in the description as always, check it out, see what you think. Um, and if you know anything about any of these things or if I missed anything, just uh, let me know. So thanks a lot for uh, watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Many thanks for tuning in to the Musical Instrument Investigator. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon.